Hello scholars, welcome. Mr. Hinkle here. In this lecture, we're discussing types of metamorphism, which is the process that changes the protolith into a metamorphic rock. It's how do we get metamorphic rocks? So in this lecture specifically, we'll look at the various processes of metamorphism. But first, let's define exactly what metamorphism is. If we zoom way out, there are three types of rocks, igneous, sedimentary, and metamorphic. Metamorphic rocks are rocks that were once a different type of rock, and it could be any of the three that have then undergone agents of metamorphism, specifically heat and pressure, to change their form. And what changes is the texture and the mineralogy. So we could say heat and pressure, we'll use a delta, change texture and mineralogy. Now, there's a variety of ways that this can happen. For the most part, it usually occurs deep within Earth's crust, and the types of metamorphism are going to be the following. Burial, deep burial in a basin, contact, heating by uh, igneous intrusion, regional, fold and thrust belts, subduction, subduction zones, faults, Lots of those around the Earth. Hydrothermal, that means hot water and shock. This is going to be a bolide impact. So here is our list, and let's explain each one of them. So number one, burial metamorphism. In the bottom of a basin, ocean basin, sediments will accumulate. Over time, compaction, cementation, lithification. Great. You continue to bury sediments on top, it adds more pressure and more distance between the surface and the bottom, which means more heat. That increased pressure, that increased temperature, these deeply buried sediments is going to move from sedimentary rock into low grade metamorphic rock. First type, burial metamorphism. Contact or thermal metamorphism. This is when magma is making its way underneath the surface as molten material and it heats up the nearby rocks. So, here, where is my pointer? Here we can see an igneous intrusion. This is a pluton or a magma chamber. This is the igneous rock, but surrounding the igneous rock, the rock was there before the country rock is heated up by the pluton and it ends up changing its form. High-grade hornfells, intermediate hornfells, low-grade hornfells. Hornfells has high temperature, low pressure. So we could look at a rock, hornfells, identify it, and then infer contact metamorphism, especially if it's located next to an igneous intrusion, such as a pluton, getting to depositional environment. Name of the game. What is the geological history of a given area? How do we know that? The rocks tell us. My favorite question and my favorite answer. Number three, regional. This is probably the most common type of metamorphism. We can see regional metamorphism occurring at convergent plate boundaries over large areas. So when we're thinking regional, we're thinking tectonic boundaries, and it's occurring over a very, very big area, right? We're thinking mountain building events, which in geology we call orogeny or orogenesis, huge volumes of metamorphic rocks. This creates more metamorphic rocks uh, than any other mechanism of all of them that are listed. Very important for not only shaping Earth's surface,
but for the creation of mountains and the preservation of past mountain ranges that we can identify through metamorphic rocks because the process of metamorphism occurs in the heart of these tectonic boundaries. Subduction zone. This is another type of regional, but more specific to a subduction zone. So in the subduction zone, we're going to have all kinds of things happening. Some contact metamorphism from rising igneous intrusions. We're going to have an accretionary wedge that has very high pressure that's going on, giving us a unique type of rock called a blue schist. We're going to have areas deep in the subducting slab that are creating regionally altered or changed rocks. So again, we're looking at tectonic setting. We can say the rock blue schist indicates lo uh, low temperature, high pressure from the subducting slab. Geologic setting, great. Fault metamorphism. A fault is a break in the rock, kachunk, with displacement. Displacement usually is one block of rock sliding past another, creating a force on that rock known as shear stress. Now that shear stress can break up and grind rocks in between. It can uh, cause different rock types. One rock type is going to be a myelinite. Another uh, is going to be pebbles that are stretched inside of a rock called algins. But we can look at these specific types of features in rocks because really it's you pick up a rock and you go, what the heck is this? And well, it's a rock. But then you go, how did this rock form? And you can think geological processes. Yes, by earth system processes. But how? And so this is the goal of the geologist, right? To pick up a rock and say, what conditions formed or created these types of features that we see in this rock? Well, this is a rock that was once in a certain way that changed its form. And for the myelinites and the algins, we are going to say that it was in the middle of a fault that created those very specific features. Very localized uh, type of metamorphism, but still a type of metamorphism. Hydrothermal. So if we break this word down, hydro, water, thermal, heat, this is looking at the longest, largest mountain range on Earth, the mid-ocean ridge system. Located in the middle of all of Earth's ocean basins, stretching around the Earth like the seams of a baseball, it is one connected web of where new oceanic crust is generated. And where new oceanic crust is generated, there is a series of cracks in the rocks that water filters through, it gets superheated, and then that hot water actually deposits, it's ejected at the surface underneath the water as hydrothermal vents, also known as black smokers, that create a very specific type of deposit. So again, we're picking up rocks that look like they had their their form change, the protolith has been altered. This is the process of metamorphism. And what's altering it is hot water at mid-ocean ridges. Last but not least, shock. So when a large particle from outer space, we could call it a meteor or a bolide, impacts the surface of the Earth, it's it's a lot of pressure. And that event can change the type of rocks that are subject to the collision. So the rock comes in, boom, smashes, debris goes all over the place. Well, the surrounding rocks and the debris that shoots out, those rocks are going to be impacted from the collision. And in that impact, there is a metamorphism 
that changes the texture and the composition of that original rock or the protolith. It's called shock lamine, and we can see this here in a coarse grain under thin section, how the texture has been changed from that impact. Very cool. So metamorphic rocks are rocks that have changed their form. They change their form through the process of metamorphism, when heat and pressure change the texture and the mineralogy. And this happens in a variety of ways. Burial, contact, regional, subduction, fault, hydrothermal, and shock. And understanding the rock and the type of metamorphism that occurs helps the geologist to understand the geologic history so we can unravel the mysteries of our Earth through time. Thank you so much. I'll see you again.